Welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show, Monday edition. And uh, I am thrilled uh, to welcome in uh, my next guest. He's a man who I've I've known uh, for many, 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 many years, uh, not that either one of us are are that old, um, former Major League player and manager and manager in Japan where he's a legend, not to say he's not a legend here, and now the athletic director at uh, Sacred Heart. You used to watch him on on ESPN, Bobby Valentine. Hey, Bobby, how are you? Steve, when we were introduced, they should have given me your last name, the great Steve Mulder. Oh, there you go. I would have known who I was talking to. Good to see you, bro. Well, it's good to talk to you. It's been a long time. All right, first, before we get to, and and this is great, and congratulations on on, on the Sacred Heart uh, uh, job. I know that means a lot to you, and it's a natural transition into the the documentary that you're uh, executive producer of, which is called Schooled, uh, The Price of College Sports, which is going to be premiering on uh, Epics uh, TV in just uh, just a couple of days. But I do want to uh, get to um, to the baseball playoffs. I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't. You were the manager of the Boston Red Sox last year. Turmoil. I mean, it, it reminds me in a way. I hosted the Yankee pre- and post-game show in 1990, the year they won like 67 games. And it, it last year for the Red Sox reminded me of that. Different circumstances, but just what appeared to be, for me, looking in from the outside, complete and utter turmoil, tumult, chaos, whatever you want to call it. And now the Red Sox in the postseason, that amazing comeback last night. What what, what are you thinking as you're watching uh, the, the Sox and the Tigers? Actually, as I was watching that, believe it or not, I, I knew it was going to happen. When, uh, you know, Leland brought in the left-hander to pitch to Ellsbury, and he walked him. I said, David's hitting a grand slam here, and uh, <laughs> this game is tied. And uh, he did, and uh, they tied it. They had one foot in the grave. They took that foot outside, and uh, he did, and uh, they tied it. They had one foot in the grave. They took that foot out. Bernie Ill Will, are you rooting for them? I mean, how do you view it? No, I'm rooting for them. I picked them to uh, – to face the Dodgers, and that's another little problem I have out there. And another team I was with where uh, I really thought they had the best team in the National League, and now they're down 0-2, so they're going to have to make a good comeback uh, on their own. Yeah, my heart's with uh, with Mattingly. When you saw Scherzer, up to that, and then we'll get to your piece, well, when Scherzer had him down after five and two-thirds, no hit, ten strikeouts, after, after 17 strikeouts and one hit the night before, I mean, I'm sitting there thinking, my God, I mean, this might be historic in nature if, if he continues this. Yeah, and after 108 pitches, he didn't continue, and... Uh, the rest is history. Yeah. All right. All right, Bobby. Let let let's move on to uh, to to the uh, the documentary. And this is something that you know the debate has gone on for a long, long time. First of all, one of the aspects of college sports is should college athletes be paid? But your documentary uh, not only talks about that; it goes much deeper and much further. Yeah, indeed it does, Steve. Uh, it, it's not the uh, the question that's being begged during this documentary. It's a There are many questions, you know, uh, involving the rights of the players. And now that it's such a big industry and now it's such an old system that is um, um, presiding over all of these players, uh, I I think that um, at least there should be a discussion about changing the system. All right, how so? I mean, I mean, this is based on a a, a, a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, um, a piece uh, by T- T- Taylor Branch, um, which was in the Atlantic, was called "The Shame of College Sports." Now there are millions of people uh, all across the nation, of course, that spend their weekends enjoying the the pleasure of college sports. Um, what what is the shame of college sports, and how would you how would you uh, suggest that uh, that the whole industry, if you will, changes? Well, Taylor Branch's uh, book and his article uh, dealt with the shame, but uh, after we uh, interviewed many more people, uh, we cooperated with the uh, president of the NFL Players Association, Dominic Foxworth, and we uh, collected uh, everything we can from uh, both sides of the ledger. We were on campus. We interviewed chancellors and vice presidents, uh, ex-vice presidents of the NC2A, and as well as many uh, ex-athletes and others. Um, we just came up with a, a thought, it's not ne- necessarily a conclusion, that um, you know some of the things that have gone on just uh, aren't correct. Okay, and 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 and, and such as what 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 would you, well, Bobby as, Valentine, you know, as the players. as the EP of this, after yeah. having produced this, and I don't want you to give away everything that's in it because we'll watch it right. uh, on the 16th on on Epics. But but what what what's the biggest problem out there in the treatment of college athletes? 
Well, it's probably just the false promise of thinking they're going to get a, a four-year scholarship and thinking they're going to get an education. It's just it's it's not what's out there. You know, it's a one-year contract that they get, not four years, uh, and it's at the discretion of the coach whether or not they keep it. Uh, whether or not they get an education during the time they're at school is really questionable. I mean, there's there's uh, as you'll see in the documentary, there are systems and situations that were uncovered. One at the uh, University of uh, North Carolina, Chapel Hill, where there were actually classrooms that the players never walked into, and yet they got an A or a B in, on the class, and it went on for years. So uh, is there an education or is there just a diploma? And are these rights of the players when they get injured or when they get disciplined, are they the rights that they should have? They're not the same rights you have. They can't get a lawyer and uh, protest any, any disciplinary act that they might get. Um, so let's just let's just jump into 2013 with a system that can move forward and be beneficial to both sides. We're talking to Bobby Valentine, of course, a former major league player and manager and a broadcaster, and uh, he's now the athletic director at Sacred Heart University and the executive producer of uh, a documentary to a premiere uh, in uh, on October 16th. Today is the 14th, so that would make it Wednesday on Epics. Um, so make sure you all uh, check that out. But um, let me let me talk about the issue of of pay. You know, the NCAA to me has always, I, I just think that in many ways, and, and this is talking about the athletes who do make it, the athletes who perform, the athletes who are on the field uh, earning the accolades. I, I think the NCAA is, is much too restrictive in many respects. You know, if a kid talks to an agent, if a kid takes a donation or drives a car, or, I mean, all these little things that, that they get penalized for that they're not allowed to do, while at the same time, in many respects, they're making, helping make millions of dollars for the university. How do you feel about that? Well, that, I think that's uh, brought out in the documentary and is factual. Uh, but the other side of that idea, or, or a complementary uh, uh, idea, is that these athletes don't even have the same rights as the other students on campus. You know, other students on campus who have scholarships can reap benefits of their of their abilities. Uh, uh, someone, an English major, could write a paper that uh, is published in a journal and get paid for it. And they, they're a scholarship English student. But a football player can't write his name on a piece of paper and get paid for it. Right. So it's kind of weird that, uh, and I think unjust, unjust that, um, you know, there's this discrepancy on campus. No, lots, lots to talk about. I, I can't wait to see it, uh, Bobby, uh, uh, on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time, folks, on uh, Epics. Uh, so let me let me get your prediction uh, going forward. First of all, a, a, any desire? I know you're at Sacred Heart, and I know you love that position. Um, is 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 the door open for managing down the road? I guess the door is open, uh, Steve. But you know, I'm doing a lot of things right now, and it'd be tough to get me, uh, you know, back doing just one thing. I kind of. I kind of like all the things that I'm doing in my life now. And I got one more. You may not want to. You may hate me for this, but uh, this this non. I, I know this nonsense with Keith Oberman. Keith Oberman. Let me just tell you. I mean, it, it, to me, I, I have heard so many stories about Keith Oberman. And and it, it, did he keep you off of TBS, uh, the the baseball coverage uh, this season? I I have no idea if he kept me off. Uh, all I know is he he did take exception to the fact that. I had an opinion when I was asked my opinion, and it seems like that's the only thing he's ever gotten paid for is his opinion. So, again, where's the justice? There, there. <laughs> All right. Hey, Bobby, good to talk to you, man, and good luck. And Are you writing a book? Because uh, I had heard you were writing a book, Valentine's Way. Yeah, I'm trying to get that done, too. I'm not sure that I have the time but uh, to make a deadline, but, you know, we're putting stuff down. All right. Well, we'll have you back when that comes out, if that's okay. Thanks, Steve. All right, Bobby, Always take good care. Good to talk to you. Take care. Bobby yeah. Valentine, ladies and gentlemen, um, managed the, um, the Texas Rangers, the Mets, uh, to the World Series, by the way, with the Mets in 2000, uh, the, the uh, Boston Red Sox, uh, played for the, uh, the Dodgers, uh, California Angels, the Mets, the Seattle Mariners. Um, he's a character. He's outspoken. It's gotten him in trouble. Who hasn't gotten in trouble for being outspoken? And this, this Keith... Uh, uh, this Keith um, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, um, who'd I just say? 
<laughs> uh, for, from um, on TBS, uh, yeah, Keith Olbermann. Keith Olbermann. Um, he he, um, he didn't like apparently a, a remark that Bobby Valentine made when he was asked something about 9/11. Said said not enough Yankee players were were down there at 9/11 um, uh, during 9/11 to 9:21. The Yankees were not around. You couldn't find a Yankee down at Ground Zero. Uh, talking to the guys who were working 24/7, and uh, so Keith Olbermann didn't like that. Keith Olbermann to me, is a vicious, vile, disgusting left-wing lunatic who, if he were a conservative, just ask Rush Limbaugh, just ask me, would never be allowed anywhere near sports and the microphone. But because he's a left-wing lunatic, he's welcomed with open arms in the sports world into sports broadcasting again and again and again. He has said horrendous, horrific things about President Bush, Donald Rumsfeld, our government when it was run by Republicans. Horrific things. Called them terrible names. But that's okay, as long as you're not saying it about the left. Disgusting. All right, 855-777-9660. Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio.